So hi everyone, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining today's guided tour for our brand new series, Chemistry for VCE. Um, before we get started, um, we'd like to recognize the diverse traditional lands on which we are each located. We acknowledge the traditional owners of these lands and we pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, recognizing the elders, past, present and emerging. Um, there'll be a few parts to today's webinar. First, we want to touch briefly on changes to the new study design. Then we'll give you a summary of results from our market research and highlight some points that may, that you may be able to relate to in your own teaching experience. Um, we'll then introduce you to our new series, Chemistry for VCE Units 1 to 4. Talk briefly about product configurations and pricing, and then we'll leave some time for Q&A. Uh, with that, let's start with a very brief overview of changes to the study design. Uh, we know that there have been some changes to content from slight modifications of wording to shifting key knowledge dot points between areas, areas of study and also the addition and removal of some key knowledge dot points. There have also been some changes to assessment, including um, the scientific poster format mandated for area of study three across both units, un units one and four, and the four mandated SAC types for units three and four. Um, another key change is the addition of new cross-study specifications, including elaboration on and that continued push towards key science skills, the new scientific investigation methodologies that are being implemented across um, a range of other senior sciences, and also that big focus on um, application of sustainability concepts. Um, all of these changes have been really nicely summarized by our expert author team in a workshop we ran last month. Um, this also includes tips for planning for and teaching the new study design and um, you can access um, the recording by scanning this code or going to our website. So I'd encourage you to um, go and check that out. Um, with that, um, let's talk about the current issues in VCE chemistry classrooms and some challenges that teachers may face with implementation of the new study design. Uh, we know that an obvious focus is exam success and we've spoken to many, many VCE chemistry teachers and a piece of recurring feedback was that we need more application and exam style questions. At Oxford, we agreed that there's always scope for more good questions to help target those key knowledge dot points. Another key point is um, support for those mandat mandated SAC types, um, which ones to choose, what to keep in mind when designing a SAC. Um, teachers want more guidance around this. Prax, uh, we know that you're a bit worried about fulfilling the 10 hours worth of prac work per unit. Um, questions like how can you cover controlled experiments as well as the other seven new investigation methodologies. Um, depth of resources finding that middle ground where resources provide sufficient depth without being too dense or overwhelming, and also further support for integrating those key science skills with key knowledge. Um, with these challenges in mind, Oxford is publishing a brand new chemistry for VCE series. Um, this series is designed to really take the worry and stress out of planning for and implementing the new study design. We really tried our best to design the series to tackle these pain points and today I'll give you a walkthrough exactly how we're doing this. Um, before jumping in, I did want to introduce you to our brilliant author team who are really the backbone of the series. Um, we have Kate Adrians, Carolyn Drennan, um, Carrie Bloomfield and James Kennedy. They really took their collective teaching experience to create this resource that we know will be a really great tool for VC chemistry teachers and VC chemistry students. All right, uh, with that, Oxford's Chemistry for VCE series consists of these two print books, which we've shown the covers of here, alongside a suite of digital resources. Today, I'll walk you through our sample chapter, including um, all the print features, and then I'll take you through the digital platform. Um, each chapter is purpose written and mapped directly to a section of the VCAR study design. Chapters are then broken down into individual topics according to each individual key knowledge dot point. And um, you can find these dot points in the chapter openers um, here, just under the title. Um, for covalent substances, we've got six dot points and therefore six topics within the chapter. 
in the chapter opener, you can also find um, this groundwork resources box. Um, this includes questions that students can um, attempt to answer to see uh, to, to test their prerequisite knowledge before they jump into the chapter. Um, if they find that they're struggling to answer these questions, they can access digital um, groundwork resource worksheets via these um, icons. And I'll show you what this looks like on the live site later. Um, but these are almost mini topics with some background information and some questions for students to answer so that they can um, then answer the groundwork questions. You'll also find a list of practicals for each chapter. Um, across the whole book, we've made sure to cover all eight scientific investigation methodologies and they're flagged so that you can see very clearly um, which methodology they relate to. Um, this will help you complete those 10 hours worth of um, PRAC work per unit. Each topic starts with key ideas. So as you can see here, these are succinct concept statements that summarize what students will be learning in each topic. Um, if anything, they're like the key takeaway messages from the topics. You can also find glossary definitions in the margins, and these also can be found at the back of the book. Experiments appear within um, each topic only as flags because um, the rest or all the experiments will appear at the back of the book together just to help um, maintain the flow of ideas and reduce that disruption within the book itself. Um, so they'll have little references for which pages to go to or um, whether they're online only pracs that you can access. So um, that's pretty easy for navigation. We've also got um, study tips. These provide students with important things to know, any mistakes they should avoid or tips that can help them prepare for exams and assessment tasks. Worked examples also appear um, in the chapters for questions that students may encounter in the book or in exams. And for every worked example, there's a um, supplementary video demonstration which walks students through um, the thinking process and applying it to that specific example. We have some challenge questions, which are opportunities for extension where students can practice their critical thinking and um, apply knowledge. We also have real world chemistry. Um, this connects the chemistry content that they're learning um, in VCE to real world examples. And uh, we know with the new study design, there's a big push for that application and understanding where um, the concepts they're learning fit in to real world. Um, in this particular example, real world chemistry connects students to um, lab grown diamonds. But um, say in the polymer chapter or organic compounds chapter, we've really used this feature as an opportunity to um, build in sustainability and give students uh, practice thinking about chemistry from that perspective. To support the continued push towards key science skills, we've made sure to include opportunities for students to practice these skills in context through skill drills. Here we've also specified the key science skill that it relates to. So in this case, we've got analyzing and evaluating polarity data, um, as well as uh, links to the chemistry toolkit, uh, which I'll um, go over later. Um, this way, it's like, easy for students to find additional support if they need it to get through the skill drill. Check your learning sits at the end of each topic with lots of questions for students to apply what they've learned in the topic. Then we reach the chapter review and um, it starts with a chapter summary with all the key ideas from each topic. Uh, where relevant, you also find any key formulas um, underneath. Chapter checklists are also here. They encourage students to take charge of their own learning by assessing themselves against success criteria. If they're sitting in the um, sort of or not really boxes, they're directed back to the topic that they should revise. Cool. Um, and you've told us that you want more questions, so um, here they are. Chapter reviews include uh, more than 30 questions per chapter. Um, this includes multiple choice questions and short answer questions. Students will also be able to access digital Quizlet question sets and any additional chapter quizzes to test their understanding. And these I'll show you um, later as well. Um, but if that's not enough, we have more questions. Um, 
these can be found in the area of study checkpoints and unit reviews. So um, we're really making sure to provide students with lots of opportunities to engage with exam style questions so that um, once they hit year 12 and they're doing exams in year 12, they're as ready as they can be. But we'll talk more about this later. Um, as I mentioned, experiments are located at the back of the book. Uh, we've included a range of PRAC options for you to select from in order to satisfy the 10 hours of PRACs per unit. Uh, we've also made sure to cover, cover all eight um, investigation methodologies. Each PRAC also comes with a range of resources, including a practical demonstration video, uh, which could be handy for students who are learning remotely, um, we've also got editable PDF worksheets for students to use and um, lab tech notes and risk assessments with general advice for running the prax. These are all available on the digital platform. Um, I mentioned before that we've got something called a chemistry toolkit. Um, this appears in both the unit, units one and two and three and four print books and it sits as a standalone chapter at the front of the book. The chemistry toolkit was designed um, specifically with the cross curricular specifications in mind. So it contains important information on key science skills, um, some guidance on incorporating Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's knowledges into VCE chemistry, uh, background information on sustainability, advice for ethical thinking and assessment preparation, um, as well as um, some topics on assumed knowledge. Uh, for example, balancing equations, and in the units in, in the units three and four book, we've got um, how to use the periodic table. So this chapter is a resource that students can refer back to any time to really help them brush up on key science skills and also um, these other cross curricular specifications. Um, the chapters in chemistry for VC cover all areas of study, including the Unit 1 Area of Study 3, Unit 2 Area of Study 3, and Unit 4 Area of Study 3. Um, so we've got Chapter 10, which is the Research Investigation Chapter. This provides a step-by-step -step guide um, for students to conduct research on one of those four investigation topics, including how to choose a topic, how to evaluate resources, how to organise information and connect their ideas, and how to reference, and so on. Um, chapter 18 similarly gives students a step-by-step -step walkthrough, um, but in this case, it's more focused on experimental design, from planning to data collection, really detailed notes on data analysis and evaluation. And um, I actually had a look at this chapter today and it uh, looks like a really good resource. Um, this chapter also appears in the units three and four book as chapter 13. And, um, just really makes me think I wish I had this sort of resources when I was doing BCE chemistry. Um, so yeah, I think it really supports students um, to achieve these outcomes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the chemistry for VC series also includes a lot of exam style questions. At the end of each area of study, we have um, question sets called checkpoints, which are worth a total of 50 marks. Uh, at the end of each unit, we have unit reviews, and these um, are made up of three key parts. Part A, which is a really good revision tool for students. Um, here is where they'll find all the key ideas and also one to two exam style questions per key knowledge dot point. So it's almost like a checklist for them to go through each key knowledge dot point, make sure they can answer the question and refer back to um, the relevant topic if they do need some revision. Part B is exam essentials. These consist of um, three exam tips. Each contain an annotated walkthrough of how the tip is applied in a high scoring response versus a low scoring response. And we've also got a think like an examiner um, section where students are asked to step into the shoes of someone who's marking an exam question and use what they've learned in the tip to score the response that's been provided. Finally, we have 
part C, which is exam practice. So um, again, here we've got another 50 marks worth of exam style questions for students to engage with. So plenty of opportunity for them to brush up before they hit year 12. Um, the chemistry for VCE print books are supported by a wealth of digital resources and they're all hosted on our um, digital platform, Oxford Digital. So um, I'll give you a look of this now. Right. So hopefully you can see the landing page for Oxford Digital. When you log on, you can find um, the book in your library and once you click into that, this is what you'll see. Um, so I've just got the sample chapter for the teacher version of the book or the Teacher O Book Pro. Um, on this homepage, you can click here to access the EPDF. So I'll just click through and what you can see is um, the EPDF loaded up here in the e-reader. Um, you can flick through the pages using these little arrows, just moving through the book. And you can also um, skip to different topics by just clicking straight within the book content tab. So you can skip to the review or you can go back to the beginning. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. OK. Um, you'll also notice that um, there are there's a resources tab. We'll talk through this in a second, but we've also got note taking, bookmarking, a dictionary functionality and um, different view zoom options so um, a lot of different functionalities you can use um, as we talked about earlier there are groundwork questions within the chapter openers um, as well as resources that are available to students to brush up on any knowledge before they jump into a chapter students can attempt these questions either in their books or they can download um, the worksheet where they can just fill in their answers on a pdf so um, you'll notice that um, in this series, you there are some of these digital icons. These are hotspots that you can click on within the e-reader. So um, in this case, if we're looking to um, brush up on uh, the periodic table, we can just click this and then it'll download a resource worksheet. So as I mentioned, these are like mini topics with questions with like a bit of background information followed by questions for students to um, answer before they dive into the chapter. So those are all available there. And again, the practicals are listed there. Right. So we can move on to a topic now. Um, each topic is structured to be um, one to two lessons and we've supplied teacher notes to help you plan for these lessons and you can find them within the resources tab. So if I click into here, you can see here teacher notes. Um, I'll just open this up and you can have a look. So um, these teacher notes provide um, all the like key information, like key knowledge, the success criteria, any key terms, resources within the um, student book that you can access relevant to this topic. Um, and we've also got a sample lesson plan. So we've got like different icebreaker activities, suggested activities during class, as well as some notes for um, differentiation. So um, I think these activities could be really handy, especially for teachers who may not be as comfortable teaching chemistry. Um, so we'll just click back. Um, student book questions, including like all the challenges, skill drills, real world chemistry, check your learning and so on. These are available as editable PDFs. Um, so students can download these worksheets to uh, populate their answers or they can print them out to answer instead. So that's all there. Um, teachers will have access to all the answers. So I'll just click through and show you. Yep, so that's what they look like. And um, in terms of the student book answers, um, all the answers are available at the back of the book. But uh, for worked examples, these ones are what you can find online. Um, so this would be especially important for calculation questions. You'll also find auto marking digital quizzes in each topic. Um, so I'll just show you what that looks like. So when you open the quiz, it opens in a separate tab. So this can be quite handy because students can go back and refer to any of the content while they're going in and answering the quiz itself. So um, the quiz starts with just a few tips that students can read before they start. And once they're ready, click start. 
topic quizzes consist of three questions. So um, if we click through again, you'll be able to see that. So these are the three questions here. Um, there are a range of different questions you can progress through. Um, so I'm just going to go in and click that and then so we've got some like multiple choice questions. We've also got some like drag and drop questions, but you'll also encounter other um, types of questions, including graphing, um, sorting lists and so on. Um, so I think that's quite cool. So if we just do that, OK. Um, questions can be flagged if students want to go back to it later. So say, for example, this question, a student's unsure, they can click this icon here to flag it. That way the little flag pops up and for quizzes that have more questions, they can be like, okay, that's a question I'm not sure about. Let me go back to that later. Um, we've got a calculator functionality. So uh, this could be handy for students when they come to questions that require calculations. So it's just this on-screen feature basic calculator that they can access to do really simple calculations. Students can also toggle accessibility options. So um, there are different um, color contrast, font size and zooming in. So that's all available. Uh, there's a review um, functionality, which I'll go back to in a minute. You can view it in full screen and students can also um, save their answers and exit the quiz to come back to later. All right, so let's look at the review. Um, at the review, students can filter by questions that they've flagged or questions that they've maybe skipped and forgotten to attempt. So if you click and filter through, it will just show those questions that have been flagged or unattempted. So um, that's a good sort of quality control for them. Uh, once they're happy with their responses, they can cl click uh, finish and then submit their responses. And then once you close that, they'll be able to see the response to their quiz. So uh, because I've gone in and just um, click to random answers, they luck has not been on my side today, but um, students will be able to see the breakdown of questions they've gotten correct, incorrect, and any questions they haven't attempted. Um, and then if they they want to see which ones they've gotten wrong, they can click review result and um, have a look to see which is the correct answer. Um, so this quiz that I've shown you today I've shown you using a teacher account. So this means that teachers can actually also go in and see the quizzes that they've assigned to students. Um, speaking of assigning, uh, we've got um, Gabby online today to help us demonstrate that assign functionality. Um, so I'll just switch back to the presentation slide and we'll talk through that. Here I'm playing Ms. Lam, uh, a chemistry teacher at um, OUP secondary school who's in her second year of teaching. Uh, she's looking to set some homework for a student, Gabby, who's just managed to catch up on uh, chapter three covalent substances. Gabby's an average student who's missed some days of school due to COVID, but is well enough to resume classes online. Um, I want to assign some work for her to complete um, as revision before she's back in the classroom next week. So this includes doing a bit of reading, so looking through the chapter review and completing that chapter checklist. Um, I want her to complete the review questions and also test her understanding with the um, chapter review quiz. So let's see how this all works. All right, so what I'm going to do first is um, assign her reading. So I can go into the O book and make use of that note taking functionality. So I'll just go into the review. If I click on the note taking app, why is it not letting me? Okay, hang on one second. Let's try that again. Alrighty. It's frustrating when you get to it and there's something that goes wrong. Okay. 
All right. Um, let's pretend that I have assigned this. So what I would have done is highlight. Oh, here we go. It's working now. <laughs> it's making a fool out of me. OK, so we can highlight um, a part on the page. So I've just highlighted the review so it's clear and add a note. So I'm going to say hi, Gabby. Please, one, read the chapter. Oh, the chapter summary. Two, complete the chapter checklist. Three, complete the chapter review questions and chapter review quiz. All right, so I've added that note and what I can do is now I can share it to her. So if I select this note that I've um, created, I can click here share. And if I go into my classes, which I had set up previously, I can select Gabby. So Gabby is student number three today. So we've selected her. And um, just to confirm that this is the note that I'm adding. Um, she's in the chemistry class and she's student number three. So we've confirmed that and sent that to her. So she'll receive a notification and we'll see this later. Um, in addition to this, I want to assign the um, chapter review questions, which are here. So Gabby can just go in and click this to access the worksheet. So that's this. Alternatively, I can assign them to her directly. So if we go back to the home page, there's a resources tab here. So if you click into here, you'll be able to find all the resources for the book. Uh, we want the chapter review, so if we go all the way down to the bottom, um, there's a little icon here called Assign Resources. So if we click that, it gives us the opportunity to select some of these resources. So I want her to complete the student book questions and chapter review quiz, so I've selected those two. And then I click Assign. And then um, I want her to get started with them as soon as possible and get them done before next week. So I've just selected that date range and click apply. Um, again, go into the chemistry class and select student number three. Apply that and then um, you can give a name to the assignment. We'll just say chapter three review. And um, you also have the opportunity to send um, the student an email notification. But in this case, we'll just leave that out. So confirm and that should have sent to her. Um, yeah, so now that we've done that, um, we can switch over to Gabby to look at the her task. So all right, Gabby. Yep. Okay. So this is my home page. As you can see here that I've got some notifications as I've gone in and it says that I've got a shared note. So if I click on this, it tells me what Miss Lamb has sent to me. So I can here check out that she's told me to read the chapter summary and now it's opened it up for me, which is nice and easy because it's right there. So once I've had a read through that, my next task is to complete the chapter checklist. I'm going through, checking over here whether or not I feel confident or kind of okay or not really confident at all about all of these different learning intentions. And it also tells me where to go back and revise before I go and complete the chapter review questions and the chapter review quiz. So if I go back to my home page over here, I can have a look at the assignments that have been set for me. So I've got my student book questions. So if I click on this, it takes me directly to an editable PDF, so I can just quickly complete them online on my computer. Alternatively, if I'm more of a written style student, I can just complete them in my book. Then once I've finished that, I could mark that as complete and Ms. Lamb could check out whether or not I've actually done the questions. Then I've got my chapter review quiz. Okay, so I'll start this. Okay, so I'm working through each of the questions that have been assigned to me. 
Okay. Hopefully I get some of these right, some of these wrong, <laughs> really. <laughs> Maybe I'll flag a question. Thanks. I see. Okay, and I'm just going to click finish. And it tells me just before I finish that I've unattempted a question. But I'm really lazy today, so I'm just going to submit it anyway, and Miss Lamp can know that I'm slacking off. Okay, so once I've done that, I can close and it will tell me my results. Ooh, 50% correct. So there you go. Bang on. Gabby is an average student. <laughs> okay, and it also shows me which ones I've got correct. And now I can review my results and check which of those questions I've gotten right and which of those I've gotten wrong. Okay. So thanks, Alina. I'll let you go and investigate my <laughs> workload. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks so much. All right. So we've just switched back to the uh, teacher account now. So if I go back to the home page, I should be able to see that uh, I've assigned the work. So if I click through here, hang on. So what Gabby's forgotten to do is mark her <laughs> mark <laughs> mark her student book questions as complete. So we'll just go in and do that first. All right. So now I know that she's completed the work. If I refresh this, I should be able to see now in the notifications that um, chapter three review has been completed. So the task that I've assigned to Gabby has been completed. So um, I can click here directly and see here that um, it says here student three publishing has completed the task. And um, because we've only assigned it to one student, there's um, a zero here. And um, if I click through, I can see the resources myself, but uh, we don't want to do that. We want to see her result. So you can access uh, her results through this reports function. So when students complete these order marking digital quizzes, their results are automatically populated in these assessment and curriculum reports. Um, so what you go, what you do is you go in and select a class, which is publishing, and in the assessment reports, uh, what you'll see is a breakdown of students' scores for reviews. So um, for the review here, we've got um, the 50% um, score that Gabby achieved. So I can actually go in and click this to see um, exactly how she performed. It even gives me um, the exact questions or what the answers she's selected and which ones she's gotten correct and incorrect. Um, and then I can also go in to see how she's performed on the topic level. So um, if I click through here, covalent compounds, you can see um, the different results for different students in my class. And um, again, you can click through the score itself to look at um, which questions have gotten correct, which ones they haven't, and how many attempts they've made. Um, so remember that topics, and therefore the topic quizzes are mapped to the individual key knowledge dot points. Whereas chapter reviews, like the one that Gabby's just completed, contains questions that cover a mixture of these key knowledge dot points. Um, while this assessment report is great because you can see how um, your class is performing on each quiz, it doesn't exactly tell you how they're performing relative to the curriculum. And that's where our curriculum reports come in. So if we click through here, we can see um, it looks a bit different. So curriculum reports will break down student performance based on the study design. As you can see here, you've got the different areas of study. So you can get a snapshot of how students are performing overall across the whole units one and two, and then how they're performing at each area of study. So if I click through here, um, I can see how my class is performing at the um, section of the key of the study design. So this is the covalent substances section. 
um, then you can drill down into the individual key knowledge dot points. So this is at the topic level. Um, as I mentioned, chapter reviews will contain a mixture of questions relating to um, that range of like all of these different um, specific key knowledge dot points. And um, this is really captured in these values that um, show up here. That's all we had for the demo. Let's go back to the slides. So in the Opal Pro, you'll also be able to find um, SAC guidance, including annotated sample responses for students and a template with guidance for SAC design, which will be handy for teachers. Um, we're also providing uh, practice exams. So these are exams that you can print out and replicate an exam environment in the lead up to those external exams. Um, we've also got experiment answers and worked solutions um, supplied online. Uh, to summarise, we've really tried to take the hard work out of implementing the new study design and support teaching and learning so that students are successful in VCE chemistry. Um, to address the pain points we talked about earlier, we've made sure to include plenty of opportunities for application and exam style questions. We have support for SACs. We're offering a range of practicals offering, I mean, are covering all eight investigation methodologies uh, with enough options for you to fulfill the 10 hours of compulsory prac work per unit. Um, so this includes a hybrid of uh, pracs that are in the book itself, plus digital only. Um, the brand new series is also purpose written for the new study design, and our authors have been in a lot of back and forth contact with Maria James from VCAR to help clarify key knowledge dot points and make sure we're really hitting the mark with um, VC chemistry. Uh, we've also been very conscious with providing more opportunities for students to practice key science skills, which we know are especially important when they hit the area of study three outcomes for units one, two and four. In terms of pricing and availability, you can find this information in the following table. Um, units one and two will be available later this year and units three and four in term two next year. Complete print and digital samples for units one and two are now available to you. Um, to help you with your book listing decisions and you can find um, this in your Oxford Digital Library. Um, just a note that the student digital license is um, for two years so that after year 11 um, and when students are well into year 12 they still have access if they need to go back and um, fill in any gaps in their understanding when they're working through the new curriculum. So I think that's quite handy. Um, before we do move on to Q&A, I did want to introduce you to our sales team. Um, we've got Alicia, David, Caitlin and Paul. Um, I'll just leave this slide up for a second so you can grab their contact details if you do want to get in touch about purchasing chemistry for VCE. Uh, now moving on to Q&A, uh, one of our authors, Carolyn Drennan, has also kindly volunteered her time this afternoon to help answer any questions that are related to the content of the book. So feel free to pop any questions in the chat if you do have them. Um, with that, were there any questions to kick us off? Yep, so we've got a few here, Alina. So the first one we've got from Gavin, and I think this one's more directed to you. So in the sample chapter that we have access to, does that include a sample of the teacher notes lesson plan? Yeah, so everything that you've seen today will be available to you. You'll get all those teacher notes as well as um, access to those quizzes you can have a play with. Um, everything's available there. And then we've got another, we've got actually a few questions from Sakina, I think. Um, so we've got, can you assign the review questions to the whole class? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so before when I, sh I can show you again. So um, when we go into resource and, as, and resources and assign from here, um, let's say we're going with these, let's assign the groundwork questions. So. Um, if we click assign and we select the dates, you can go in and select. Um, so these are your different classes, right? You can select multiple classes. So if I want to um, assign to both the chemistry class and the science class, but I guess in this case you'd have like well, maybe multiple chemistry classes loaded up. Um, you can do that. You can select specific students, um, especially like 
in the case where you've got one or two students who have been missing classes due to COVID or like different absences, you can really tailor that assigned functionality. Yeah. Okay, and I think this is another one for you, Alina. So are there any suggested rubrics for outcome three? Suggested rubrics. Um, rubrics. Um, as part of those, uh, that the investigation chapter, the research investigation chapter and the investigation design chapter, those are really structured um, to help students and we've got checklists within them to make sure that they're um, completing all the tasks they need to like in terms of selecting a topic, in terms of like what they need to consider for evaluation of data. Um, not sure if this addresses your question, but we've tried our best to make sure um, that students are really hitting the mark with all the tasks they need to complete to be successful with that area of study. Okay, and then I think one more for you um, is, are there any pages available on sustainability? Yeah. Uh, do you mind reading that one again? Yeah, so uh, were there any sample pages on sustainability that we could Sample pages them? on sustainability. Um, as part of this chapter, we don't have any, but um, I can definitely vouch for um, chapters eight and nine in particular, which are the organic chemistry and organic compounds and uh, polymers chapter. Um, sustainability perspectives really make an appearance not only in the check your learning questions especially like the later end where they're sort of encouraged to engage in those like higher order thinking processes um they're also found in the um real world chemistry so um they've been given a specific scenario where um it's being applied to a real world context and then given that sort of opportunity to think about how it um, links to sustainability. Yeah. So okay. Unfortunately, nothing to show at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> okay, um, this one might be better for you, Carolyn. So what are the different types of assessments as required by the new study design? Of the different types of assessments, um, most of the now, for anyone who's had an experience of a VCAR audit, uh, what comes across every year is that you just can't have every SAC task being a topic test. So we have included the checkpoints at the end of each um, unit as a, a, like a, a preparation for an exam, for an example. But we've um, incorporated um, some SAC tasks on a research review or literature review. We've incorporated the controlled experiments. We've also uh, incorporated um, some um, assessment tasks on um, oh, what's the other one. We've got some fieldwork practical activities that you, the teachers then, once they've done that fieldwork visit, then they can assign assessment tasks, you know, uh, with structured questions based on that. Um, which are in the in the practical activity book. Um, just trying to think of the other one. We're also we've also done um, some um, modeling and simulation like um, classification and identification. That's the one. Uh, so there are types of um, practical activities that you can do either in class or remotely so that all students get an equal chance of success, whether they're, um, you know, because it's very hard to account for those kids that are missing because either illness or COVID or um, extended holidays, but that you still need to get them to demonstrate their knowledge for the outcome. So there are a variety of um, tasks uh, integrated into the new textbook that will cover um, each outcome, but there's they're not just topic tests. I mean, there are uh, structured questions in there, um, integrated into each activity for the SAC tasks. And um, yeah, we, uh, that's our intention so that the um, the students um, get to run that controlled experiment, but then the follow up questions, the teacher can either uh, modify the questions that are already set in there, because I know from the VCAR order, you just can't, um, you have to modify you, your content from already published material enough so that it's not the same for every student too. Does that answer the question? Yeah, 
that seems yep. good. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, so we've got another question. So which SAC types will you pro be providing guidance on? But I think Carolyn's addressed a lot yep. of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide Sorry. teacher guidance on all the SAC tasks. Yep. And, um, and for the practical activities where you have teacher and lab tech notes as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, all those uh, resources attached to experiments can be found um, at the back of the book. Oh, at the back of the EPDF. So within those um, topics, hang on. it's easy if I just show you. Yeah, and in the yep. book, so in the hard copy book, they're um, signposted in the chapter yep. as well. Yep, so um, at the back after all the chapters, you'll see um, chapter 19, which is where all the practicals live, including the ones that are online only. And then if you click into resource, you'll, you'll find everything there. So including those worksheets that you can edit, the lab tech notes and risk assessments, everything's there. Okay, and then we've got another question from Trent. So are the virtual chapter review questions or multiple choice? Yep, so um, those digital chapter reviews, we've tried to model against exam style multiple choice questions. Um, so there are a set of 10 per chapter. And then in addition to those, we have those topic quizzes, which are three questions that are a big, bit of a mix of things. So we've got like those multiple choice questions as well as um, classification questions, closed questions, fill in the, fill in the blanks and so on. Okay, and then I think Sakina just provided a little bit more clarity on her question before. So are there like guidance for marking rubrics in terms of the SAC creation and SAC resources? SAC resources. Yes, that's something um, we're discussing with the authors. So um, definitely something we can provide. Okay, and that's all the questions that we have in the chat. Um, but I've got a few questions myself. So when will the digital resources be available for the book? Um, so the we're looking at um, October this year for the um, digital, uh, well, digital the e the EPDF. So um, that should uh, the complete book should reach your Oxford Digital Libraries then. Um, in terms of the print book, which does it deviates a bit from your question, but um, <laughs> that sits in December this year, and then as um, the EPDF is available in October, we'll be gradually rolling out the digital resources. So we'll aim to have as much as we can in time for that. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's all the questions that we have in the chat. Perfect. Well, if that's all we have today in terms of questions, I'd just like to take a moment to thank you all again for attending and also to thank Carolyn for attending today to answer those questions. And I hope you have a lovely remainder of your week and thanks again for your attendance.